Also, this is big. He defended Jim Jordan in July of 2018 when it became public that Jordan had all that um, beautiful, wonderful, disgusting controversy at Ohio State. Rhea. And we're the Gala Sisters. We're actually Irish twins. Yeah, which means we're 15 months apart or less. So guys, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the big four that we did. But today we're going to talk more about the insurrection on the Capitol. This will be a three-part series, starting with um, Mo Brooks. Then we're going to be doing a look at Don Jr. and... And finally, Rudy Giuliani. So we'll call this the three instigators. That sounds good to me. Yeah, so for those of you who do not know, I mean, I guess, I don't know how you don't know, but there was an insurrection, a coup, attempted coup at the Capitol on January 6th. And if you are not familiar with what happened there, you should go watch our video recapping it. And... There were some people who were more involved in it than others, and would you stop it? Before Damien rudely interrupted us, we'll take a look at Mo Brooks. Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Louder, will you fight for America? Louder, are you willing to do what it takes to fight for America? Louder, will you fight for America? USA. USA! 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 Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. Those were the words that he said at this pre-rally, pre-war cry. I don't even know what they thought they were doing. Those were the words. That started it all. And you gotta remember that people like this are very dangerous. You know the saying, sticks and stones will break my bones, but um, words will never hurt me. Mm -hmm. That's not true. <laughs> words hurt way more than sticks and stones. Um, Mo Brooks is serving as a representative in Congress for Alabama's 5th Congressional District, and he has been there since 2011. However, he has also run for senator, but he's never won. No. He is from Charleston, South Carolina originally, and he ended up later moving to Alabama with his family before he went to high school. Yeah. Uh, he has a double degree in both poli-sci and economics from Duke. And he earned his J.D. Juris Doctor from the University of Alabama School of Law, so he is a lawyer. Yeah, he's married to some lady named Martha Jenkins. With her, he has four children. So he actually also graduated with high honors. So he allegedly has a brain. And he's a dad. <laughs> this guy is someone's dad. There's no excuse for this. He, he obviously has the capacity to understand the difference between right and wrong. Anyways, he joined the Mormon church. But he has said that he considers himself a non-denominational Christian. So, I mean, being a Christian, I have no problem with that. No. Nope. You, you, you do you. You do what works for you. He announced in uh, 2017 that he had prostate cancer. 
maybe this is why he doesn't fear prison. Who knows? I don't know. I looked for updates on this to see how his cancer is doing today and I haven't been able to find anything on it so if you guys know please let us know in the comments. I, I just have no idea what's going on because it was supposed to be a very bad case of prostate cancer and we actually know someone who did die from it. I know two someone. Mm -hmm. He served in the Alabama House of Representatives for four like the state House of Representatives because there's a state congress and a federal congress for four years starting in 1982 and he was elected to the House Republican caucus chairman three times. So he was the basically like the head of the you know the, the Republican caucus. Yes. So in 1991 he was appointed not elected as Madison County District strict attorney. However, he tried to uh, run, but he subsequently lost in 1992. Yeah, so the voters did not want him to fill that spot, which seems to be a reoccurring theme in the research that we've done on him. Interesting. He was special assistant attorney general for Jeff Sessions and Bill Pryor. Again, he, he was not the AG. He was their assistant. Yeah. Um, he did manage to run for Madison County Commission uh, starting in 1996, which he subsequently won four separate times. In 2006, he tried to run for lieutenant governor and lost. In some states, the lieutenant governor has a um, separate run from the governor. In most states, they don't actually do that, but I guess in Alabama, they do. Well, and there's a few others. Yeah. Also, this is big. He defended Jim Jordan. In July of 2018, when it became public that Jordan had all that um, beautiful, wonderful, disgusting controversy at Ohio State, which we covered in Jim Jordan's video. He said, oh, I worked with him, and he would never, ever do anything like that. He is anti-abortion. Okay, could you please explain to me why the government gets to decide who gets to keep their children? I don't quite understand that one. I won't make a whole separate video on this, but I saw a post on Facebook today that said if you are anti-abortion, then you need to make the world a better place for people to have babies in. Mm -hmm. By I agree. supporting women and supporting disabled children and making sure that no one lives in poverty and et cetera, et cetera. You can't just be, you can't present this as a problem, be anti it, and then not come up with any sort of solutions. Like our dad always used to say, figure it out. Come to us with a solution, and then we'll fix it. Yeah. He, so this last summer in 2020, during the riots, he said that Black Lives Matter is a racist group. Honey, I don't think you understand what they're saying or why people were rioting and protesting. You just, it's because of people like you that we, well, we weren't there, but we did it online. Why we were speaking out. Yeah. He said that the George Floyd protests in Seattle were riots. Honey, riots are what you instigated, not what happened. There were some riots, but he said that all the protests, he's just like blanket statement. Again, you don't understand what we're trying to say. And it's because you don't that we have to do this. He voted against the Justice in Policing Act in June 2020 that they tried to push through in response to the George Floyd riots to make real change. And he's like, nah, you don't need it. Excuse me? And now they're claiming that the Democrats are anti-police. No, I think yeah. that's the Republicans. Mm -hmm. um, he condemns cancel culture and um, any of those, you know, state statue removals, like, you know, the statues that are racist or sexist or, you know, depict something that they shouldn't depict. Again, we have our own personal opinions on this, too. However, it just seems to be within the GOPQ cult to be against that no matter what. And you have to look at each situation separately because they're each different. Yeah. He does not think that illegal immigrants and felons should have the right to vote. We know a lot of felons. Down below, we will link some of the felons that we know. Mm -hmm. I can think of at least four. Okay, so 
even though he decided that he votes via absentee. He says voting by mail is unsafe. Ah, uh, stupid. That's the same exact thing. Learn your damn facts. Okay, for those of you who are not from America, the only reason the GOPQ doesn't want people to vote by mail is because Republicans tend to have a lower turnout when voting is done this way. So they are, it is just a self-interesting on their part. It is not actually unsafe. There are not higher cases of fraud to do it this way. They, they're they requ- making things up. They require you when you submit, at least in our state, they require you to, you know, write your state ID slash driver's license number down. I think that they just tend to take care, take advantage of people who are stupid and followers and uneducated and that they're just not smart enough to figure out how to put it in the mail. And we actually did, uh, well, we didn't do it by mail, but we filled out um, a ballot that was mailed. Ballot? Yep, that was mailed to us. And you can watch us figure out how to do it here. It's not hard. Okay, on August 4th of 2014, he told Laura Ingraham that the Democrats were out to get the whites and, like, eradicate the whites when she showed him a clip of Ron Fournier or Fournier, I'm not sure how to say it, said the GOP would not survive as a party of white people. His exact quote was this. Well, this is a part of the war on whites that's being launched by the Democratic Party. And the way in which they're launching this war is by claiming that whites hate everybody else. It's, like, part of their mysterious strategy to get rid of them. You just, you sound, you sound racist. You also sound really crazy. Like, I mean, this, this is him saying it. It's, 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 it's insane. <laughs> yeah. He opposes the Equal Rights, men, equal rights Amendment uh, since it discriminates against men and religion. If we don't want to separate church and state, it's time for us to start taxing churches. What do you not understand about men factually still make more than women per dollar? Yes, that's one of the things that Janet Yellen talked about. And we'll do a video on Janet Yellen, too. Just in the last few weeks, there was one week where every single person who became unemployed was a woman and no men did. That's That's what they reported on CNN. While he supports wearing masks and social distancing, so he does acknowledge that COVID is real, he does not support quarantine or COVID shutdowns or school closures or anything like that that work to fight the virus. So he's he he's trying to play both fields like, oh, it is real, but I have to be a good, I have to be a good um, re- Trumplican and I have to go and I have to uh, say, but, but business first. He believes that land erosion is causing the sea levels to rise. He does not, or sea levels to rise. He falsely stated that the Atlantic ice sheet is growing. No, ice caps are, the ice are all melting. They're not growing. This is a fact. This is not an opinion. You can't say, well, my opinion is getting bigger. But did you go out there and measure it? No. There are people who do measure it. They do. They. I think they measure what it. What is it with the GOP? G-O-P-Q and science. And what is with them making up just random lies about stuff? I don't know. Like, well, you know what? Her hair is actually yellow. Why is it yellow? Because I don't want it to be purple. So I'm just not going to acknowledge that it's purple. (laughs) What the hell? He said that if Obama really wanted to make more jobs, he needed to start re- by repealing the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. He even got into a fight with Jake Tapper about this on CNN. So, ugh. <laughs> he really didn't like Obama. When I was researching him, and especially when I was looking through Wikipedia about him, <laughs> he does not. And I can't imagine why he doesn't like Obama. <laughs> you you fill in the blanks. Um. He wants the federal government to get out of the way and let states deal with immigrants how they want to. That means immediately deporting them. The problem is that with these are real people, not numbers or things. Yes, immigrants are people. We all came here via ancestry, and maybe someday when we're feeling like it and we have a little more time and a little more money, we'll do a one of those DNA things. So, yes, he wants to get rid of illegal immigrants. 
And that's that's the thing with the GOPQ. They don't seem to have a problem with most legal immigrants. But here's the thing. Even with illegal immigrants, like she said, they're people. They're not numbers or things. And so when you say, okay, this pregnant woman whose husband or significant other maybe got into a car accident and perished and she's seven months pregnant and she's an illegal immigrant and maybe she's high risk pregnancy too and you are just gonna go in there and cruelly deport her and maybe she has a couple children who you're just gonna deport her without the children sometimes they do this and you have to go through each situation separately it's just it's we have to put a human factor into it. Always. Um, he wants to ban the children of illegal immigrants who were giving citizenship under DACA from serving in the army. So who's going to do it? I'm certainly not going to. I can. I respect people who, uh, to quote Chris Cuomo, I respect people who can, but I don't have the guts to do that. Again, I thought the Bible said the sins of the Father should not hinder the son, or something like that. When the sons of the father come, they will not play. I will not play house, or something like that. Something like that, and it depends on which version of the Bible you're reading, too. And again, these are people we're talking about. He wants to defund NPR and probably public television as well. Yes, because we just hate free speech. I don't know. Whatever. He believes what happened to Michael Flynn, Michael Flynn was a set-up. Shocking. He thinks Nazism and socialism are the same thing. No, honey. That would be... Your GOPQ party. Is the same. <laughs> Notice we changed the name of it. Mm -hmm. So, he. the funny thing about him is he did not immediately support Trump. He was actually a very proud, adamant supporter of Ted Cruz, who ran against Trump for the nomination, the presidential nomination in 2016. And he actually highly criticized Trump, as did Ted Cruz. So, I find this extremely interesting because why are the people who were most adamantly um, criticizing and against Trump in the GOPQ now speaking out for him. Like, did he threaten them? We're gonna guess. Brainwash them? Uh, I don't know. So, there was that amicus brief, the Texas v. Pennsylvania, and his signature was on that amicus brief. Mm -hmm. So, he must have actually ended up working things out with Trump because in 2018, he was endorsed by Trump when it was time for his re-election into Congress. So like we said earlier, he played a massive role in the coup, attempted coup, on January 6th when he said, you know, today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass. And I'm quoting exactly what he said. No congressperson should ever say that. That sounds like the job that someone who from a little bit how can you hide behind that? I mean, that's a that's a call to arms. It is blatant. Extreme right-wing activist Allie Alexander said that Mo Brooks himself was one of the congressmen involved in plotting the coup on January 6th. I personally think he should be behind bars for that. How, how are you not? I mean, there's a recording of him doing it, and then Ali Alexander came out and publicly named some names. How are these guys walking freely among us? If they were not politicians, they wouldn't be. So Brooks actually, he completely denies any involvement in it in the January 6th attempted coup and says, no, it wasn't me or the GOPQ. It was Antifa. Guess what? Newsflash! Antifa doesn't exist. And despite all of this, he was one of the evil, evil people who objected to the certification of the Electoral College votes. He will not stop. And I don't think he's ever going to. We have to do something to stop these GOPQ people. These people should not be allowed in Congress or near anyone who they hate or oppose because I just worry that something bad will happen. Now we, I don't know for sure, obviously, but may, but it just seems like they're just so persistent. 
Now, not all Republicans are members of the GOP Q party. People like Adam Kinzinger have no business being here. Now, I've heard discussion, or Mitt Romney, too, um, or uh, there's some others, too. Lisa Murkowski. Mm -hmm. uh, or Liz Cheney. Um, but <laughs> there's been talk of them splitting off into a Patriot Party, which they should. All right, go ahead. Go they go should. Go ahead. You should take all of your... Actually, parties shouldn't exist. People should just be able to vote for, you know, whoever. Mm. Or they say, well, how would you hold them accountable if there were no parties? We the voters would then. Yeah. We would. If we didn't like somebody, then they wouldn't get voted in. Because we voted for Biden. We support Biden. We are happy he won. However, he was our only option. We didn't have anybody else to even consider voting for. And there's a like, million other people I would have rather yeah, voted for. I couldn't wait for, well... Mm, Maybe um, Biden Bernie. can be a little conservative in this area, and this person is a little more than that. Like, it was just evil versus good. <laughs> really? I don't want that option. No, and I don't want that option. I want yeah. good candidates to choose from. I want all of them to be good. And I just feel like we're not, we're not going to say exactly who we would have supported because we don't know. No, I don't know who would have made it through if it was just Democrats running or just people in that would be considered Democrats if there were no parties. Parties, there's Ron. And so we can why, do a whole video about why that. Why are there only two people that we get to vote for? I mean, technically, that's not true. Rank choice voting would be a really good idea. And be, I'm from Minnesota, and I know a lot about rank choice voting, so we should do a video on that. And I can share with you guys the story of how I met someone famous in the process. Yeah. So guys, we're going to end this video here because there's nothing else to say about losers like Mo Brooks. So if you guys liked this video, make sure that you click the thumbs up. If you didn't like this video or don't like Mo Brooks, do not click on the thumbs down because it still gives us an interaction with the channel. And why would you give oxygen to the garbage? Smash that subscribe button so we can get a thousand subscribers to this channel and monetize it so we can do this as a full-time job because that's what we want. And I'm going to ask you guys to do me one more little favor. Go underneath the subscribe button. Go to the right of the subscribe button and there's a bell. Now give that bell a big ring and click all so you always know whenever we're going to go live or put out a video, usually we put out videos Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, but there's so many things happening and special editions happen. What if a celebrity dies? What if something amazing happens? And what if there's, you know, this impeachment trial and there's still an election? You don't want to miss a moment of these. So just so you know, we will not be having a video come out this Wednesday. Because Trump's impeachment trial starts, we will be going live at least once this week. Just remember that we are trying to get a 14-year-old through school. So we will do our best to go more than once, but we'll see what happens. And do us a favor, please share this video with your friends and get them to subscribe. We're trying so hard to reach that thousand goal and beyond because, you know, once you start going, it just keeps rolling. And we were, we're making these videos to be educational. We're not trying to attack anyone. We're trying to protect ourselves and our nation and make sure that people can make informed decisions and just see how destructive the type of people that the GOP Q attracts are so that we can be aware of what exactly is going on because I know that I wasn't aware I've learned a lot from doing this and just remember that the two of us are the only gala sisters out there doing YouTube and we will see you in the next one bye Today is the day American patriots start taking down names and kicking ass!